Um, so our second speaker today is Natalia Martin. So Natalia is one of my colleagues at Massey uh, teaching in animal science and she's presenting some work from your PhD. That is correct. Yep. Oh, yes, Thank you very much. So um, yeah, this um, work was part of my PhD. I was involved in the dairy beef progeny test for the first two years. And so I want to acknowledge my um, supervisors, uh, Nicolas Schurz, Steve Morris, Nicolas Lopez Villalobos, Julie McDade, and Rebecca Hickson. And today I'm gonna to be talking about temperament uh, of big cross dairy cattle. So um, temperament has been associated with um, how animals grow and, and some meat quality traits. Usually if we have uh, an animal um, that is very temperamental, it may grow less, it may have a smaller carcass, perhaps it has less uh, fat cover, it may have darker meat that is tougher to eat. And this is particularly true for um, beef cattle in ext extensive farming systems. So the first time that a calf goes in contact with a human is at winning, which is a very stressful situation. And so the us, become a threat to them. Um, but the thing is in New Zealand, most of the beef uh, that we produce comes from animals that were born on dairy farms. So it could be fully dairy breed animals. And we use a lot of this beef cross dairy cattle. And so these animals have been hand reared by people. Um, and so the temperament um, of them may have changed. And so it's quite unclear um, if there is any effect of the temperament of the animals on how they grow and what type of meat they produce. So very quickly, an overview of um, the project. So this went for two, the first two years of the dairy beef progeny test. We have a whole dairy farm um, and we have mixed stage cows, and we also have first calving heifers, so two-year-old um, heifers. And they were all crossbred with uh, beef sires. Only we used uh, Angus or Hereford sires, and really what we were looking was at the, the genetics of them. We looked at uh, birth weight, calving ease, gestation length, growth at 600 days. But temperament was not part of the, the selection criteria. And in fact, very, very few of the sires and where only Angus sires had some kind of docility um, scores or docility records against them. So we produced um, beef cross dairy calves. So we have over a, a thousand of them. And um, we follow them throughout the lifetime. So here you can see on the x-axis is the age of the animals. They were born at about just over 36 um, kilos average. Um, and they were born on the dairy farm. So they were reared for the first few months of their lives. Um, so they were weaned again as a mean at 82 days. And then they went to the sheep at beef farm, the beef finisher, until they went to slaughter. The other thing you can see in this graph is that um, the, the blue dots and the blue line are the heifers. Um, so they went to slaughter at about 27 months of age. Uh, just over 500 kilos live weight. And then the red dots, red line are the steers. Um, they were over uh, around 29 months of age and over 600 kilos live weight. Um, so really the focus was um, to look at the temperament of these calves, um, if that has been modified by the that, that um, rearing on the dairy farm. And we looked at um, the temperament throughout the lifetime. And then we wanted to see if the temperament that we saw early, so as soon as they came on the, on the beef farm, um, could be used as predictors of their growth and meat quality traits when they, um, yeah, after slaughter. So, I actually condensed methods and results. What did, we, what did we do and what did we find? Um, 
So the first thing, I'll just leave it there, we did a crash score. So there are different ways of measuring temperament in, in animals and, and especially in cattle, but we chose two methods. The first one was crash score, so the animals were, um, while, while we were weighing them on the, on the crate, um, I scored them from a scale from one to five, where a one is a really calm animal, and I don't know if you can, no, it doesn't work, does it? No, it doesn't matter. Um, but pretty much an animal that is a one is calm, it's just staying there, hardly moving, um, and, and the score goes up to five, where it's an animal that is constantly trying to jump out, the, shaking the whole crate, uh, is snorting, making noises. And um, these animals overall were really calm. So you can see on the graph um, on the right that uh, we measure at, at five times, so 200, 400, 600, 800, and just before they went to slaughter, so literally before putting them on the truck, I did a crash score on them. And overall, they were, most of them were between one and two. We did get um, just a handful that went on the five and four um, scores, but there were very few of them. Um, and the second thing that we did was, once they were weighed and uh, scoring the crash, we let them out of, of the crate. And we put two, um, two gates, so there are laser beams going across there, um, and really was measuring the time that the animals took to go through the first one and the second one. Um, so animals that are calm, usually they just walk out of the crate, uh, while an animal that really wants to get away from us will run out. And again, um, most of the animals, we measured that four times. Um, most of the animals walk out very um, slowly. Some of them had to be pushed out um, because they just, yeah. Especially if it was raining, for example, that was something that, well, it was like, I'm quite happy standing next to you. Um, we did have some animals that did, um, so this is in meters per second, so you, you still see that there was a bit of a range. We did see some animals really running out. And lastly, we, um, we look at all of these measures and correlate them with each other and they were all really highly correlated. Now, what, did, did this temperament have any effect on growth? Um, was the first question and not really, especially 200 and 400 days we saw neither um, crash score or exit uh, velocity had an effect, but at 600 days we did see that um, at one point increase in the crash score, so a bit more, an animal that was a bit more nervous um, would grow a little bit less. That was statistically significant, but as you can see, it's just two kilos over 200 days. So it's not, a, biologically, it's not something big. And in terms of meat quality, we saw no effect um, of either crash score or exit um, velocity on uh, ultimate pH or color score. So um, after the animals were slaughtered, I, uh, we did measure on the carcass, but I do not have pictures of the carcass. Um, but that's how we measure pH um, in different points on the eye muscle, and, and then we did a color score that go, goes from one to seven. Again, we did see variation between animals. Uh, so for example, that's a, a, a darker meat. Um, that is very related to pH, but it wasn't necessarily re related to the temperament of the animal. So just to conclude, um, beef cross dairy cattle in this study was very calm, but it's likely that most of our beef cross dairy in New Zealand will be calm uh, because they have been hand reared. And, and also in particular in this study, we were weighing them every month, so they were really used to being handled. Um, and so um, temperament is unlikely to be an issue in hand-reared uh, beef cross dairy cattle and should not influence growth and meat quality threats. So with that, I um, would like to thank everyone that has been part of this. So uh, the Dairy Beef Progeny Test was funded by Beef and Lamb Genetics and I work on Limestone Downs. I had a 
Callahan Innovation Scholarship, and Greenlee was also um, the mid plant that I went through, and Massey University was where I did my PhD, so thank you very much.